We shall be talking about patent doctor's arteriosus for the USMLE exam, also known as PDA. In order to be able to understand how PDA actually occurs, let's take a look at normal embryologic uh, cardiovascular system. This is a, how blood vessels actually carry blood into the heart. So blood gets into the right atrium, and this blood comes in from the inferior vena cava and also the superior vena cava. As the blood travels from the right atrium, it goes into the right ventricle. During neonatal period inside utero, babies often have few channel openings. They have a patent foramen ovale, which allow bloods to cross over from the right atrium into the left atrium. And also, they have a PDA, also known as the patent ductus arteriosus. So some of the blood actually travels from the right atrium to the left atrium and also travels down to the right ventricle. From the right ventricle, the blood is pumped through the pulmonary artery and some, some of the blood travels right directly into the aorta through the patent ductus arteriosus. The reason is because there's a lot of high pressure in the lungs when a baby is inside a uterus, right? This is because the lungs are not well developed. So because the lungs are actually shrunk inside the uterus, inside the baby, there's high pressure here. So most of the pressure, there's high resistance cause a higher pressure to allow blood to easily translocate from the pulmonary artery right into the aorta, shunting the blood into the systemic circulation. Because the lung is not really responsible for oxygenating blood in utero, that allows more of the oxygenated blood coming from the right side of the heart, which is a high, higher pressure system, to get blood to the rest of the systemic circulation. And this is fine. This is normal in utero. And some of the blood eventually returns back to the pulmonary veins, to the left atrium, back into the left ventricle, and the blood ends up going into the aorta. As soon as the baby is born, what happens is the lung expands, okay? So the lung gets bigger, which means the resistance inside the pulmonary artery decreases because the amount of resistance inside the lungs has actually lessened. Well, this decreased lung resistance allows the shunt, which normally goes from the right side of the heart to the left side, to return circulation from the left side to the right side of the heart. So one of the most important features once a neonate is born is that the patent ductus arteriosus closes. And when it closes, it actually becomes a ligamentous arteriosum. And also the patent foramen ovale closes, it, preventing blood from shunting from the right side of the heart into the left side of the heart due to decreased pressure inside the pulmonary vasculature because now blood can easily travel through the pulmonary arteries into the lungs and now the baby takes a nice deep breath that nice deep breath that they take allow them to be able to oxygenate blood and now the lungs can function as an oxygenating chamber to oxygenate the blood and get it back into the pulmonary veins and from the pulmonary veins into the left atrium and down to the left ventricle and now the baby is getting good oxygen to the rest of the body. So in neonates, once they are born, you have that reversal of the shunt, which becomes now left to right. Now, if a baby is born and this ductus arteriosus, which is shown here and enlarged here, does not close, this is what happens, take a look. The blood goes into the left ventricle from the left atrium, and then once the aorta is pumped the blood, remember the aorta is now a very high pressure system on the left side of the body. The blood starts to trickle down into the patent ductus arteriosus, allowing that conduit to let more oxygenated blood go through into the rest of the lungs. Well, we don't want that to be happening, but this is what happens in patients with PDA. Well, unfortunately, this patient, often if this is not corrected, can result in late cyanosis in the lower extremities. Why? Let's take a look. 
if oxygenated blood is going to the other, but half of it is being dumped into the pulmonary artery, right? What happens is less blood gets to the lower extremities, and this can lead to extremities in the lower cyanosis later on in the new in the newborn baby. So, how does this murmur present with? Well, on the board exam, they want you to be able to hear the murmur of patent ductus arteriosus, which is known as a machine-like murmur, and this is what the murmur sounds like. So, as you can see, the murmur sounds exactly like a machine-like murmur, okay? It's like going back and forth inside the machine. Now, the patency of a patent ductus acerosus is often maintained by prostaglandin E and also low oxygen tension. That keeps the PDA open. However, in order to fix this pathology, you, you have to give the patient endomethacin, which ends the patent ductus arteriosus and closes it. Because once you close that channel, now blood can easily translocate and go down from the aorta down to the rest of the systemic circulation. Okay, so in the board exam, prostaglandin E and low oxygen tension keeps that open. But when, which pathology will you wanna keep this PDA open? The only disease pathology when you want to keep the PDA open is in patients with translocation of grid vessels where they have the aorta and the pulmonary artery that's been transposed on top of each other. And you need that blood to be able to be translocated from the patent ductus arteriosus to get some oxygenated blood to the rest of the tissues. But the treatment is endomethacin endomethacin so very very important so the reason why i wrote endomethacin here is because if you call it as endomethacin it allows you to remember that yeah that's what uh closes and keeps the pda closed okay so that is very very important that you know that for the board exam another congenital cardiac association they want you to know about pda is that this is often found is associated with patients with congenital rubella. So if they want to test you on what, if a patient has rubella, they have blueberry morphine rash on their skin and they ask you what kind of cardiac defect you're most likely going to see in this patient, the answer is PDA, patent doctor's arteriosis. Okay, so that brings us to the end of our lecture on PDA.